Classic Ristos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can be a member of the Shannon's Club, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, Hair and Forbes Machinery House, and Gun Lake Quarries. On this week's show, I bring you to a little country town just outside of Yass, New South Wales, where the word has got out and some customers want to be a part of the action with their cars as well. It's a Murren Bateman mechanical and tyres special in this week's Classic Restos on the road. <laughs> With me now, the owner of Murrum Bateman Mechanical and Tyres. How are you doing, Shane? Good, Fletch. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, very good. So. That's good, mate. You've got a great setup here. Yeah, it's not too bad. We've been here a bit over two years now. So, yeah, no, it's, it's going really good. Yeah. So, very happy. Yeah. So. Plenty of local business. Yeah, local business has been really good and getting a lot of old classic cars. So, yeah, suits me. So, yeah. Well, word got out. Um, a few classics turned up today. Yeah, yeah. I let a few guys know that you guys were going to be in town. So, yeah, we yeah. see what we could organise. So. That's good. They must have had much else on today, eh? No, Murray Bateman, not much goes on. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you, mate. So, look, obviously uh, mechanical and tyres, but, uh, yeah, the, the type of work you specialise in? Pretty well anything. If someone comes in the door and if I think I can do it, I'll do it. Yeah. So, yeah, it doesn't matter whether it's a bike or a car, I'll yep. have a crack. So. Yep. I love to support small business, it, and it's good to hear that you're going well. Yeah, no, like I say, it was a bit scary starting up, but yeah, no, it's taken off and it's going great guns now, so yeah, I'm very happy. So. Well, that, that's a testament for how good you guys do things, because uh, small towns like this, I guess you wouldn't last long if you no. if you weren't that good. Yeah, well, <laughs> word, word of mouth, so you always, want, you always want good publicity and try and do the right thing by yeah. people and make sure they're happy when they leave, so... Now look, you're uh, obviously a car guy yourself, uh, we've got the XP Ute here, um, a work in progress? Yeah, this is my XP, I'm slowly getting there, it's been a while, but just don't get time, I'm too busy fixing everyone else's car, but yeah, no, it's, it'll get there. At least you get to look at it. Yeah, it's, yeah, I look at it every day thinking I've got to get to do something with it, yeah, so yeah. yeah. Well, at least you're in the, in the right game for it too, which has got to help. Yeah, it definitely helps, and I know all my mates and that are either mechanics or electricians or something so I, I get plenty of help so yeah. yeah and you like your ford shane you got a mustang out front yeah i'm more of a ford man like, don't get me wrong i do like the old classic holdens and that as well yeah. but i'm more of a ford man yeah i think uh, the trend is changing i think everybody's appreciation uh is more broad these days you know it's uh, there's a lot of people out there now a lot of guys that are uh we just appreciate the classics in general don't we yes we do well, like i say mate if I'd, I'd have a Holden any day of the week, but like I say, yeah, any anything that's you know older, with steel bumpers, I'll have one. Yeah. So yeah. What's the story on the Mustang? What's the history there? Um, that was some real close family friends of mine. They owned that, um, and they sort of getting a bit old and not real well health wise, and yeah, so I sort of took over that from them, and yeah, yeah so it's it's an all original old 289. Yeah. So yeah. What, what year are we talking there? 67. Yeah. 67. It's been converted to right hand drive, but other than that, it's pretty well original. So. Sweet little engine, the 289. Oh, yeah, it's a perler. It goes well, too, for a small engine. They they yeah. do get up and go. So. so It's a nice package, too, because the, the early Mustangs weren't that heavy either. No, well, that's true. So that's probably why, yeah. So, But uh, it needs a little bit of work, too, which hopefully one day I'll get there. And Yeah, so, but, yeah. Having mates in the business helps. Like Jeff, the guy who owns a couple of these cars here, he's, he's a panel and paint guy, so he helps me out a lot. So, yeah. It's so in terms of business, Shane, um, people travel a fair distance to come and see you? Yeah, I get a fair bit of business out of Yass. I live in Yass, so I get a lot of business out of Yass, Canberra, and yeah, all around. So yeah, it's good. And uh, your wife Bronwyn in there, and your daughter Abby. Wow, as soon as we walked in, uh, just greeted nicely, just felt like part of the family as soon as we got here. Yeah, no, well that's how we want it to be, so that's why we've got the office set up the way it is, just so everyone's comfortable, they can walk in and be happy and yeah, sit down and enjoy it. So. Your retail area is nice, you've, you've got some good, uh, just some nice display in there and point of sale? Yeah, well that's what we like, you know, especially being out on Saturday, people can come in and buy something and we've got some good memorabilia stuff in there so yeah. people can have a look and actually enjoy it, so yeah. 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 
Good on yeah. you. All right, well, Shane, thank you very much uh, for uh, having us here at Classic Restos to film the episode and for your support. We do appreciate that. Um, the guys are waiting. The cars have turned up. We'll go and have a chat. Have a chat to them, yeah. And yeah. No, I appreciate it. Thanks very much. Good on you, mate. And um, we'll keep in touch regarding the ute here. Want to want to see that finished on the road? Yes, well, hopefully the interior is hopefully getting done in the next couple of weeks yeah. by a local guy that lives out here. He works in Canberra, yeah. so... Yeah, so hopefully once that's done, then it's only really the exhaust and we should be on the road. So Awesome stuff, Shane. Keep up the good work, mate. No, thanks very much, Fletch. I appreciate you coming here. No worries. So, thanks, mate. Like Dad, I've always been a Ford man. The Falcon Squire wagon was unloved in 1964, but turns heads today. The Americans call them woodies, but the panelling, it's just fibreglass and plastic. But it's a passion that Shannon's understands. Which is why my Fords are insured with Shannon's. And now, so's the home. Call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Heron Forbes Machinery House has been family owned and operated for over 85 years and it's easy to see why. Planning on welding? Look at these welding tables and clamps, air compressors and different air tools, sandblasting cabinets, through to spray guns. Everyone is welcome at Machinery House. There are competitive freight rates around Australia and you can buy online at machinerywhouse.com.au. So remember, Hare and Forbes has the range. Moving on through as we do, next cab off the rank. How are you doing, Jeff? Yeah, good, thank you. Fletch? That's the way, mate. Beautiful GT. Yeah, it's not bad. It's a faker, not a shaker. Yeah. yeah. Faker, not a shaker. you got to love that. Hard to tell when these restorations are done so well, these replicas. Wow. Uh, it is hard to tell between that and the real thing. It is. Um, there's so many parts available that look like the real deal. So, yeah, it's quite easy to do it now. Yeah. Only telltale the compliance plate. Pretty much, yeah. Okay, so Jeff's story of this GT, uh, what can you tell us about it, history-wise? Um, it was a full nut and bolt restoration um, a few years ago, um, and then it was sold to a, a family friend in Canberra, um, and he had it for, a, it was his baby for a long time, um, and then it had some damage done to it, and he sort of lost a little bit of interest in it, so he let me take it off his hands. Um, Such a chore. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but he regrets it now, um, and I think he would probably take it back quite easily. He's moved into a, a Mustang now, so, you know. Look, all things aside, back in 1971, XY Falcon, uh, a car very hard to beat, but we're just not talking in performance, but an all-round car. They were a, a fantastic Falcon, they really were. Uh, visibility, um, drivability, the, these were really a nice thing. And there's just something about a Vermilion Fire GT, whether it's a, the genuine or the replica, uh, it's a colour that suits it all the way down to the ground. Yeah, I think probably from our memories, our childhood memories, was Alan Moffat cruising around Bathurst or whatever. And yeah, I think XY is an XY and everyone knows it. Doesn't matter where you go, yeah. Holden or Ford, they all know what an XY shaker is. Okay, so we look at the interior, all original going on there. Something once again about uh, the, the, the dash on these things. Um, beautifully appointed, I believe, for 71 for a, an Australian-built car. Uh, the console with the top loader uh, through there. Um, we've got a, the beautiful wheel. Um, it, it's just, a, just an, a, an, a very rounded car. Yeah, I think it's probably Mustang-inspired. I think a lot of the parts came from the States. There's no doubt about it, uh, with the release of the XR Falcon, uh, the Falcon really went uh, steps ahead in leaps and bounds uh, from the design of front end forward, floor pan, right through into the 70s with these cars. Um, now, as part of this replica, Jeff, uh, engine-wise up front, now look, it looks, the old Clevo there looks as stock as a rock. Um, what's been done there? It's uh, obviously a 351 board and stroke to a 383. Uh, four Vs, um, a big cam. I believe it's the track track cam. Um, It'd be good round town. Uh, it's horrible to drive down low. It needs to have three or four thousand revs in it to to make it get up and go. Um, I don't have a horsepower rating on it, but yeah, it's all it's okay. So Jeff, I just want to thank you, mate, for coming along today to Murrum Bateman Mechanical and Tyres. Beautiful example of the GT, and uh, I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks for having me on, mate.
the feel when you actually drive the car, you get in the car in the morning, it's cold, um, you have a bit of a, you know, it's a bit ugly to drive till it warms up and then you get going. It's great, you, you sort of cruise thinking about, you know, the past and all that. People want to wave and flash their lights and all that sort of stuff. It's a pretty cool feeling. It's an old car, everyone knows what it is, but it's pretty cool. First time with cars, my brothers, older brothers, I had four older brothers. Um, they were into racing cars, stock cars, all that sort of stuff. They had FJ Holdens that they raced as speedway cars, so that's where my cars came from. And then when I left school, I did an apprenticeship as a panel better. Um, and yeah, it never really left. It took a bit of a holiday when the kids were young and we had no time for cars and things like that. But yeah, as you get older and the kids are less dependent, then you have a bit more time to play with some toys. So yeah, it's a pretty good time of life. From that era, the 60s, 70s, I think maybe they're not such good looking cars, but we think they are because they're in our memory is what, we, what they were. Maybe the newer cars, I like the new Commodores, I quite like the shape of the new Commodores with the big wheels and the flare guards and things like that. But yeah, the chrome and, and all of that stuff, it's in our memories as fond times and I think that's why we like them so much. I think back in the day when they built these cars, they were, they had to be multi-purpose. We didn't have a, a big factory where we could build five different shapes in the one model. So they went and said, righto, let's do the American thing and put the biggest engine in we can and go and have some fun. And that's what they did. And I think it should keep on going, but I guess it never will now. That's so good times. Hi, I'm Deirdre. This is my hot rod. It's a 1937 coupe. It is running a 350 Chev, a 400 turbo gearbox, a nine inch diff, bullet intro wheels. The paint is the blue is custom bench mix and it was imported from Athens, Tennessee from Australian American Hot Rods in 2011 and built from the ground up by my husband. So it was imported in 2011 as a fibreglass shell um, and the chassis was set up as a right hand drive ready for us and built over in the, the States. Um, my husband worked on it tirelessly while I did all the housework for about four years for the build. Um, it was way too slow for me because I was very much over housework um, but the final result was pretty jaw dropping. I have to say I love this car for the reason that Jeff has always wanted a hot rod and he's had so many different cars over the years but to see him finally drive this completed and make it into the top 60 elite at Summonats four months after it was on the road just melted my heart. It was just wonderful. It, to, to be in it and driving it and to know its life history and how it was built from the ground up and every time you put the accelerator down there's that forward movement. Um, it, it's just, it's an experience you, you, you can't put into words. It is just absolutely wonderful. It, it always amazes me that when you think back and see these cars as they rolled off the assembly line back so many years ago, to think what they look like today and, and the evolution that's gone through them is just simply so exciting. The potential of what's going to happen in years to come is wow. Who would have thought a businessman's coupe in 1937 would have turned up as a hot rodder's dream in 2021? So that's a little bit about um, what I like to call my hot rod. Um, I love this car and it's a, um, a bit of a cool car because when you drive it, all the boys love to go. Yeah, but you have to be cool and go. So, it's wonderful. My passion for cars began when Nana and Pop bought their new Toyota Crown. 
It was Nana's, really. She loved that car. We went everywhere in it. My passion now is just the same, even though my cars are a little different. I've still got Nana's car, couldn't part with it. And I reckon if she was here today, she'd be insured with Shannon's too. Call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Time for Mitch now on today's show. How are you doing, mate? I'm doing well, thanks, Fletch. How are you? Good, mate. Good. You having fun? I am. I am. It's a good day. Mate, you've been here a few hours out there talking to the boys. Doesn't get much better, eh? No, nah, it's been great. Yeah. Seeing all the cars and being able to participate. Love it. Yeah. Good on you, mate. Thanks for having a day off work and popping around. You're welcome. Okay, now, Datsun 260Z. Got a... Got a bit of time for these. I, I, I like these these Japanese products. These these Datsuns are a good thing. And uh, 1974 to 1978, they made the 260Z, correct? Correct, yeah. Okay, uh, look, you know, these are a good thing. Um, that overhead cam six-cylinder engine that Datsun Nissan made for these things. What a brilliant engine. And even aesthetically, when you have a look in the engine bay, although you've done some modifications here, which we'll find out in just a moment, but just the sheer size, they're a big six, aren't they? They are a big six, and, well, they're pretty bulletproof too, which is nice. Yeah. And it's um, I've tried to keep it... It's obviously not original, but I've... I love the engine, so I didn't want to change it for something different. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Again, the Japanese uh, overhead cam, alloy head, you know, back in the early 70s, uh, just the way that they, they built these things. Um, stock standard, the 260Z, around 120 kilowatts of power. And uh, I think for memory too, they made just over about 300,000 of the Z cars. Yeah, they did make a lot of them. Obviously, a lot of them went to the US, um, quite a few in Australia, yeah. the UK. Yeah. Um, yeah. These cars were very trendy around Los Angeles on the western side of uh, the United States. They were, they were the, you know, the backdrop of the palm trees, Hollywood, Hollywood Boulevard. They were, they were an ultimate sports car. They really were. Yeah, and I think originally the whole marketing with the Z was for the, the U.S. market yeah. and trying to break into that market. I think. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they sort of put MG out of business almost um, because they were so reliable and inexpensive at the time when they came out. Yeah, yeah. That's one thing too, that, uh, again, that I do love about the Japanese product is that you've, you've got that good product, you've got that reliability. Okay, now, uh, Mitch, you've obviously got this car set up for the track. Uh, you know, Blind Freddy uh, could tell that uh, this thing's just not your standard streeter. Um, big tyres, front and rear, squats low to the ground it's got a, a nice attitude looking at the car in the engine bay a ton of stuff going on there what have you done okay so it's an original l28 so the the nissan engine was the l series engine so this would have had an l26 originally it's got the two which is 2.6 liters so this is a 2.8 liter block um, it's the original 280zx turbo head Triple 45 mil Webers, normally aspirated, um, all the good bits in the motor, and it's running to 182 horsepower at the back wheels. Wow. So that's about a 330 horsepower motor, I suppose. Yeah. 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 That'd get this thing mobile, because again, not a very heavy car. No, so it only weighs about 1,080 kilograms. Yeah. Wow. But how cool does that engine look, sitting there? in all its exuberance with those triple carbs on there, it, it, it's meant to be there. It just fits in that engine bay superbly, doesn't it? I love it. I just love it. And I just, you know, I love going to track days and uh, obviously you're usually amongst a lot of much newer cars and I get some funny looks when I first come in the door. Like what's he got that old thing here for? And then I do a few laps and there's usually a crowd in the garage. Doesn't take long before the funny looks turns into respect. Correct. That's right, yeah, and people yeah. come and ask me, what have you done to this? Yeah. And, oh, oh, I thought it was a V8, I thought this, yeah. I thought that, yeah. so, yeah. Well, look, you know, you haven't got yeah. that heavy weight over the front end either. You've oh. got some lightweight package going on there as well. Yeah. Um, I think the, the Z cars certainly sit into a realm of, um, of popularity where it doesn't matter what sort of car you owned as a classic, you'd, you'd have some sort of uh, time for one of these. They, they were just such a popular car. They were, and they've sort of come back a bit in the last few years, I think. Um, one of the actors from the Fast and the Furious movies made one yeah. um, and that sort of made them really popular again and I think they put it into the Gran Turismo PlayStation game. Yeah. Um, so they've 
sort of made a bit of a resurgence yeah. and um, and they're, they're really a sort of a cult car. Yeah, yeah. How do you feel when you drive it? I love it. I just love the car. I owned my first one when I was about 18. It was a 240Z. Um, How cool were they? Oh, it was great. I just love the American-inspired dashboard. A little, yeah. little bit of curve around, a yeah. bit, of, bit of wood grain, the round instrumentation. That, yeah. That's a cool look. Yeah, I love it. Good on you, Mitch. Good on you. Well, look, you know, this could easily turn into the Mitch half hour because uh, <laughs> an interesting car. And again, uh, you know, without sounding too uh, cliched here, they, they don't come along all that often. So um, no, it's getting more and more uh, hard to find, yeah. especially good ones. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Good on you, Mitch. Um, yeah, that, that's awesome, mate. Not only is it a street car, you've got it set up for the track. You've got best of both worlds. Yeah. So when it gets a bit boring out on the street, mate, at least you've um, got it set up for the alternative. Exactly, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, buddy. You're welcome. Thanks, Fletch. Big day here today at Murrum Bateman Mechanical and Tyre. Time for Mark. How are you, mate? Well, I'm not bad, Fletch. Good. Thanks for hanging around today. Oh, not a problem, mate. You've enjoyed yourself, haven't you? Oh, I had a bit of a chat with a few people and, yeah. uh, you know, checked out a few cars and, yeah, it's been all right. Hard work, isn't it? Oh, you know, day, you know. <laughs> okay. This is stunning. 1939 Ford Coupe Ute. Coupe Ute, yeah. The, um, the, the Fords made a... A, uh, uh, a couple of different models in the ute, but yeah. um, uh, like a, a pickup, but these were just Australian coupe ute. So they were like a coupe, but in a ute style. Yeah. Mate, she's a little bit fancy. You've got a nice paint colour, beautiful interior. Yeah, well, look, I, I tried to keep it sort of, um, I didn't want a, an out there type hot rod. I just wanted a, uh, something that looked a little bit original, but with just a little bit more go. It's interesting as to how nice we can get a truck or a ute to look like once upon a time like obviously just a, a commercial design vehicle um with no scope at that time but down the track and all these decades later look what we've got here well yeah look i think i think half the battle in you know these sort of year models yeah all the coupes and all the the, the sedans and the two doors and all that sort of stuff they're all um they're hard to get where these were sort of something just laid out in the paddock so you know Blokes like us come along, we pick them up and go, oh, yeah, well, that'll be pretty cool, mm. and just run with it. How did you acquire it? How did how did you find it, and what condition was it in when you got it? Oh, look, when I bought it, I um, I was looking for something a little bit earlier, but when you're out there looking, and, and you sort of got to take what comes along. So we went out to um, out near parks and looked at some 37s and stuff like that, and they were just... It was just all too hard. So this came up, and I, I didn't really want a 39, but I went and looked at it, and it was actually a pretty good body, and it was, it was all original. Um, it, was a, it had the original diff and the original front end. It was a roller. Um, they'd cut a bit of stuff out of it where there was rust and, and what have you, but um, I bought it at that stage and then brought it home and um, done what I've had to do. So. Now engine bay uh, and what's in the engine bay? What's going on there, mate? We've got a um, 350 Chev with a uh, an, uh, a, a Y and elder block, elder block cross rim manifold. That's so. a pretty old intake too. Yeah, look, one of the one of the first ones. So, yeah. but cross rim just rams directly yeah. over into each side. So. It's just about the lifestyle of these things, driving along and just experiencing. You've just, you've got yourself a a different vehicle to the average Joe on the street. This is a pretty cool thing. Oh yeah, look, it's um, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's fairly basic, but you know, there's no aircon or anything like that. But um, you got the you got the cow vent that opens. Yeah. The windscreen on the 39s is the last of the model that yeah. uh, that actually wind open. So that yeah. that windscreen will wind open this far. Yeah, yeah. And there's you know you've got some bling on the thing too. Like you know the nose cone looks nice on this. A bit some die cast, some shiny stuff going on there. The the metal work on this this truck looks really good. Yeah, well that's all all that's original. So that's all this this sort of stuff is the um, is the 39 coupe yep. deluxe yeah. stuff so and the grill the grill's got all that stainless steel st strips and stuff on yeah. it so yeah yeah you're right a bit of shiny stuff and i've got to say i always make comment the painted steel oils how cool are they yeah well i was sort of going for that old that old old school sort of look which yeah. they used to always well, the interior used to match the wheels sort of yeah. thing so uh, that's the look i was yeah, going it's a bit of rockabilly pull up at the diner sort of thing isn't it yeah that's the guy now by the way mark i believe on next week's show we're going to be at your dad's place right oh uh, yeah i think he's going there for a visit he's he's, he's told me to bring a, a car so i'm going to find another car yeah, yeah. <laughs> and bring along and um 
We'll see what happens. Right. Another big shed coming up on next week's show. In the meantime, thanks, Mark. No worries. Thanks, Sweet. Well, it's a big thanks to Murren Bateman, Mechanical and Tyres for this week's episode of Classic Restos. I hope that you enjoyed the show. And until next week, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can be a member of the Shannon's Club, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, Hair and Forbes Machinery House, and Gunlake Quarries.